Welcome back, everybody, to the Stephen Bobby Show to segment two. Uh, Bobby, so let's talk. Um, let's go with um, Donald Trump's fishing out. And he's, in my opinion, this is my opinion. You tell me what you think. Um, Donald Trump is fishing for a war. He's looking for one. Um, it seems as though his Venezuela reach didn't work out as planned, right? Um, his Syria situation did not work out as planned. Um, it seems as though he's now looking at something in North Korea. Just my opinion. Uh, or Iran, I'm sorry. His North Korea situation didn't work, and now he's looked like he's looking at something in Iran. So, real quick, I want to put out. This is, for, the, for all you military veterans out there, you're going to know what I'm about to say. So, Donald Trump dispatches... Um, the USS Abraham Lincoln, which is a Nimitz class. Um, he's in a, in a carrier strike group, which is strike group 12. Um, a strike group is equipped with combat infantry, Marines, uh, a battalion, I think. Um, you got carriers, you got submarines, I think you got six submarines that follow it. You got attack, for, I mean, this is a fully operation. They can basically do a war with a carrier group. Mm -hmm. Really, they can. I mean, most of the world don't even have a carrier. So when you're putting that much firepower in a region, you're saying something and to the world, right? And he's sending the USS Abraham Lincoln to uh, this carrier group in, in the Persian Gulf, which is, I think, an issue and it's a problem because anything can, can, can um, go wrong in this type of situation. And there have been um, during our confrontation during the Cold War with Russia, it's situations in Cuba. So this is my thing here, and this is the problem that I have, is that Donald Trump, when he was campaigning, campaigned on something totally different. He campaigned that he was going to stop all the wars. He was going to bring all the troops back. Remember, he was talking about 700 CI, black op. We, we're going to bring all that stuff back. It's going to save us money. Remember that? And um, that don't seem to be Donald Trump's position anymore. And, you know, a lot of the way policy is done in the United States is done through your, uh, well, it's done through a lot of different things, but um, John Bolton, who is Donald Trump's, um, what is um, uh, his, what is freaking John Bolton? Why am I having a brain fart here? Security advisor. Security advisor. Is that what it is? That is what it is. Thank you so much. Um, is a security advisor, which is General McCaster and what General Flynn were. Mm -hmm. Now, even though these guys were generals, they were usually very, they, they, they understand the dynamics of war. They understand. The, right. Well, you know, they, li they lived it and they studied it. They studied it. They know, know it. Yeah. Right? yeah. So John Bolton is a different character, though. John Bolton is a guy that is a strategist of everything. Firepower first. Kill, kill, kill. Because that's just his strategy. That's the way he thinks. That's the way he's always thought. He is the architect of the Iraq War. Uh, the one that we're still in, by the way. He's in the first Gulf War, the one in 1990 with first Bush. So this is what I want to do. Uh, first, let, yeah, let, let me actually ask, ask you first. What do you think? I'm sorry, I, I went out long. Because, I mean, you got to lay this stuff out because, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a history behind it, there's right? There's a history there's behind this. But, 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 so the, if we take it back to the beginning of what you said, we, you know, we, we talked about North Korea not working out, Venezuela not working out. Yeah. Syria not Let working out. Let me ask, this administration, we've seen people get fired and moved mm -hmm. and interims come in, people get vetted and do all this stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a farce, it's a joke. We know that Donald Trump just wants a legacy. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it. You put all the things forward, he wants his legacy. He knows where presidents are remembered for. Mm -hmm. He wants to be remembered. He wants his monuments, I mean, the wall. Oh, mm -hmm. we, we talked about abortion. He might, you know, resigning after abortion becomes illegal. He's yeah. gone down that route. It's gone, right? People, you don't know, it, but it's gone. I know this isn't the topic, but this is the thing that Donald Trump wants to have happen. Yeah. He wants to leave his mark. Mm -hmm. Venezuela is not coming through the way that he wants to. So I don't I want to I don't want to say that it's actually war that he's going for, mm -hmm. but if war is what's going to leave him a legacy, then that's what he'll do. You know, and and John Bolton let me let's put our 39th president, which is Jimmy Carter. I mean, that guy's got to be 100 years old. <laughs> let's tell you, let's let's put on the video him and see what he says. Go ahead, put that on. I think his last choice for national security advisor was very ill-advised, I think. 
John Bolton has been the worst mistake he's made. He's advocated going to war preemptively against North Korea, against Iraq, against, uh, against uh, Iran even. Uh, and so I think that that, that is particularly ill-advised because the national security advisor I know from experience is the most uh, listened to advice that a president gets. So it's a mistake, right? It's it's an obvious. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, uh, but if you listen to it, I, I still come back. This administration is in such like shambles. Yeah. No one listens to Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't listen to anybody. It doesn't right. really matter what he does. You bring up John Bolton you, you, with what President Carter had actually said is mm -hmm. that he's advocated for the war. Mm -hmm. He wants to have a preemptive strike. He wants to mm -hmm. fight against North Korea. So what's dangerous in this situation is that Donald Trump hires people and fires them when they don't get the job done. But he doesn't watch over them. He doesn't listen yeah. to them. He fires them if they don't That's listen to them. Yeah. So Bolton is going point. to have his war. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah. He has a bad taste over there. He's going to do what he needs to do. You know, you, uh, it's actually a really good point you brought up. He puts people in positions that are yes sir, no sir type mm -hmm. people, right? But once those people get in those, Betsy DeVos is a prime example, Secretary yep. of Education. He just puts her in there. Okay, you're a yes sir, no sir. Just do what I tell you, but yeah. go ahead and do what you want. Whatever you want. Ben okay. Carson. Yep. That, do that's whatever you what want. <laughs> the HUD. Yep. The HUD. So that's actually a really good point. So it's he, not about hiring people that you will listen to or good people that will that the president, or in this case, Trump would listen to, because he's gonna do whatever he wants. And if he doesn't wanna do it, and if he doesn't care, then that person he hired is gonna have free will and everything, you know, freedom to do exactly what, what they, they want. That's why Christian, uh, remember we yes, talked Nelson. about her? Nelson, yep. Yeah, the, how they, the reason why she got why fired. She's gone. She was unwilling to do some of the stuff that, that, he, wanted. that he wanted to do it on the border. So well, to continue doing what he wanted. <laughs> yeah, to continue, because yeah. they're still doing it to yes. this day. So. You know, what's funny, and, and we I just said this earlier, that, you know, Donald Trump campaigned on this fact if he wanted, he did not like any of these wars. Yep. Afghanistan, Iraq, he didn't like none of them. And I, I kind of want to, this, this is what Donald Trump said back in the camp, when he was campaigning, and Jeb Bush, gosh, just so long ago, it seems, just two, two and a half years ago, uh, when he was up talking about Jeb Bush. Check this out. W. Bush will campaign in South Carolina for his brother. As you said tonight, and you've often said, the Iraq war and your opposition to it was a sign of your good judgment. In 2008, in an interview with Wolf Blitzer talking about President George W. Bush's conduct of the war, you said you were surprised that Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi didn't try to impeach him. You said, quote, which personally I think would have been a wonderful thing. A close quote. When you were asked what you meant by that, you said, for the war. For the war. He lied. He got us into the war with lies. Do you still believe President Bush should be impeached? Should have been Obviously, strong? the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake. All right? Now, you can take it any way you want. And it took, Je it took Jeb Bush, if you remember, at the beginning of his announcement, when he announced for president, took him five days. He went back. It was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. It took him five days before his people told him what to say, and he ultimately said it was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent two trillion dollars, thousands of lives, we don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. That was the best speech you ever gave. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's fascinating when I watch this? When I watch this, because this is a Republican. This was a debate stage, yeah. and those were all Republicans that were in the crowd that were clapping when he said that Iraq was a mistake. Mm -hmm. that, that alone was fascinating to me, just that there were people in the background clapping at stuff that us Democrats have been saying was ridiculous from day one. Right. Right? right. It's just, I don't know, it's just insane to see how Trump, you know, I hate to call him cultist, but I'm gonna go ahead and go with that word. I know that might get me in trouble, but I'm gonna call him cultist. Um, it's almost morphed. You know, you got some, you know, he came into power saying, um, we're bringing troops back, which is a democratic idea. Um, I'm not gonna take social security away. Of course, that's what he's doing. He's doing the complete opposite. But those are, he, he, he campaigned on some, Democratic ideals, he stole some of those ideas, right? That's what got him elected, mm -hmm. is some of those Democratic ideals, 
right? I mean, Demo- well, anti-war. Don't get involved. Anti-war. But, but but he will get involved if there were, if there's something to take. Yeah. If there's oil to take. Yeah. If there's something that could profit, he'll take it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, does he want to go to war? I don't know. But again, legacy. Yeah. Yeah. If that's his choice of legacy, then that's what he's going to want. Yeah. I mean, again, he lies. I mean, constantly, <laughs> consistently. Like we keep beating a dead horse. Yeah. Th- every time we talk about these things, we throw one lie out. Show how he's lying. Throw another lie out. Show how he's lying, and um, people are waking up. You know what I? People you, are people are seeing his and, and yeah. seeing this and how you know. I mean, he lies over and over again, and 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 so we can. There's ways to twist it to say that there are. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll find a base saying that well, sending a aircraft car- aircraft carrier over there isn't any threat of war, mm-hmm. and he's kind of doing what's right because Donald Trump did stand on which is, you know, we need to have a strong military. Mm-hmm. We need to have the strongest military. Mm-hmm. And doing that is a show of force that way. Mm-hmm. There are ways to spin that argument, right? So yeah. lie after lie after lie, people are spinning it. Oh, that's not how I hear it. That's not how I hear it, right? But when there's like a thousand, I don't know how, what the number's up to now, how many lies a day oh, is he 10, tells. 10,000, yeah, 15,000. These tens of thousand lies that are happening every single day, you know, people need to see it. And if there's a way to spin it, fine. Spin the one where he says that his father was born in Germany. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> There's, There's no, no spinning that piece. And so a simple like that, like that, it means either he forgot his dad was born in America and forgot his, you know, no, dad wasn't forget. born. I, I know. Yeah. But those are, you know, it's lie after lie after lie. And, and these movements we cannot trust. He is our leader. How but, do you trust? And what happens is he saturates these lies into the public and it becomes less important. Right. And, and, you know, this is the president of the United States. And here, here's another thing. Every time I listen, I listen to that when... Last night I listened to that thing about 15 times because I was so shocked at the fact that there was people we clapping, clapping in the back. Yeah, you know, what so works? That's what, what they're going for. To say what works. But that's why he lies. Yeah, he does what works. I'm in Germany. He's in Germany. I'm in Germany. So <laughs> my father grew up in a little town here in Germany. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, seriously. And what I in the thing that I that I, when I listen to that and I listen to that when he when he says stuff like that, you know, because by the way, uh, Donald Trump has sent like six or seven more thousand troops to Iraq, by the way, in case y'all didn't know that. So he's beefing up the very war that he campaigned against. He put in place as a national security advisor the very architect of that particular war, which is fascinating to me, but nobody sees it, that how hypocritical that is. But I, I remember when, Don, when, when President Obama was president, and remember when Obama said, you're going to be able to keep your own doctor. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Republicans used that particular thing as a lie. Okay, let's just say um, Obama was lying. Mm-hmm. Let's just go with their, with their frame of thought. They used that his entire, because he passed the, the ACA two years within his, his presidency. Right. Within the first two years. Right. So the six years following after his presidency, they used that. Every single day. Do you remember that? Against. That, against President Obama. Right. And then he just keeps saying these 10, 11, 12,000 lies every single day. And nobody brings that up within his base, which is the same base that hated Obama. Right? <laughs> right? No, no, I, I agree. It's, I agree. it's, it's fascinating. But, it, but they, they are waking up. They are seeing these things because you have no you idea what is coming next. You are optimistic. No, about everyone is seeing it. We don't know what's coming next. We don't know what's coming next. How right. how much do we have to defend? How what do we have to do? Yeah. Everyone needs to wake up. These things are happening. Are, should we go to war? Are we going to go to war? Is what he's doing getting us into a place of war? These things are coming and they are building it mm-hmm. to collapse the government. That's what's happening. Yeah, and that's that's the position we're in. So anyway, that's where we are at on this segment, too. I want you guys to tune in. By the way, um, we are here in the central part of California. We're filming out of the Mad Talk TV shows, uh, Mad Talk uh, TV studios here in the central part of the state. Um, guys, tune in. There's some, there's some other stuff on here. I kind of want to do a shout out for Mad Talk TV because it allows us, it gives us this platform to do what we do. Um, and um, I really appreciate those that are in the background. You don't see the guys that are back there doing right. their stuff. Um, but anyway, tune in to our next segment. We are going to be talking about the Democratic Party and um, their, um, shall I say, their roadmap to victory or not so much. <laughs> tune into the see second what part. It is. All right. We'll see you on the other side.